Now, turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk given by Dr. Miranda James. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 35. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of talks we have arranged for the Overseas Students Association this semester. Dr. James has very kindly agreed to speak to us today on the topic of public speaking, and judging from the large numbers of you here, it's clearly a subject of great interest and relevance. Dr. James. Hello. It's good to see so many of you here, and hopefully what I'm going to tell you will be useful to you both here at the university and in your future employment. Many people avoid speaking publicly, by which I mean in front of, say, ten or more people, not because they lack the ability but mainly because they lack confidence, which is really only due to lack of practice. Today, as a consequence of the influence of television, audiences expect speakers to be relatively brief and to the point, in addition to being well-informed and interesting or entertaining. Probably the most important part of public speaking is what you do beforehand, by which I mean preparation. This includes practical details, such as knowing precisely what your topic is and exactly how long you are expected to talk for. You should also plan the content thoroughly. A good strategy is to write out the content as you intend to say it, and then make brief notes, preferably on small cards, which you use to talk from. This way you sound more natural. You incorporate pauses while you look at your notes, and you can then look at your audience while you are speaking. Never read your speech without looking at the audience. Eye contact is a very important part of communicating with an audience. So deliberately move your head and look around at your audience. Pauses are important, as most people, when they are nervous, tend to rush through their speech. Now you have some time to look at questions 36 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 36 to 40. Practice speaking slowly. This gives you more time to pronounce your words correctly. It's always easier for your audience to listen to someone whose speaking is clear and calmly paced, so that they can understand the ideas being explained. And the bigger the group, the more slowly you should speak. Remember to project your voice, speaking clearly to the person furthest away from you. It's a good idea to rehearse and record yourself. Pay attention to your intonation when you listen to yourself. It's even harder if you're speaking in a second language, I would imagine but there's nothing worse than listening to a flat, monotonous voice. So try to vary your tone and rhythm. This will add meaning to your words. Lastly, 
Pay attention to both your posture and your gestures. A confident person stands or sits in a small group with their head up, chin out, and shoulders back. Try to avoid scratching or fiddling with your hair or beard or pens, jewelry, and so on. These movements can distract and irritate your audience. Yet you may be unaware of them yourself. Another reason for rehearsing, preferably with feedback from a friend, or better still, on video. I hope these few tips will make your experience of speaking in public a little easier. Remember, practice makes perfect. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. Now, check your score. But before you go on to the next listening test, don't forget to look at the section in the book on how to improve your vocabulary and listening skills.